Let's just have a look at this sketch to get a little more background and remind ourselves how the Arduino works. Let's start at the bottom down here. This little bit of code defines a function. And the function name is my square. It takes an argument, a single argument i, that is an integer. And the fact that it's got int out here as well means that it's going to return an integer. And this is about as simple a function as you could get. It takes the argument i, multiplies it by itself, and returns that value to wherever it was called from. So, keeping that in mind that this is a function we've defined, setup and loop are also functions. And this notation here where it says void loop with nothing in the parentheses means that this is a function called loop, not void loop, loop, that it takes no arguments because there's nothing in the parentheses here and it returns nothing. That's what this void keyword means. So every sketch you do is going to have a loop function and a setup function, both of which are functions that take no arguments and return nothing. So that's that void keyword. And they're actually used in the background by the Arduino setup code that has somewhere lurking in the background a function called main. And that function called main is simply going to call the setup function once so that you can do anything that only needs to happen once in the setup function. And then, while true, i.e. every time, just keep on going around and around, call the loop function. So this is essentially what's going on in every single Arduino sketch. You need to have these two functions. They have to exist in order for the, the sketch to work. And hiding in the background is a main function that's going to call setup once, and then it's going to just keep going around and around calling that loop function. That means that when we have this loop function, it's going to get called over and over again. So we'd like to get through it as fast as we can so that we're doing everything in this repeated loop function as often as we possibly can to keep drones from falling out of the sky and self-driving cars from crashing into things. So keep this, uh, this sort of stuff in mind whenever you're writing one of these sketches. It'll help you think a little bit more about what you're writing. Now let's look at what happens when we run this function. I'm going to compile and upload it. And then once that's done, I'll watch it in the serial monitor. It's printing out 0, then 1, then 2, then 3. That's the time in milliseconds divided by a thousand, so that's time in seconds. It's printing out the result of this my square function. So 13 squared is 169, that makes sense. And then it's printing out the square root of that uh, 169. And you'll notice that we have an integer, an integer, and this last one has a decimal place in it. It's a floating point number. So we need to keep uh, careful track of what type these variables have. Are they integers or are they floating point numbers like this uh, return from this function square root of k which will always return a floating point number even if we send it an integer. You might want to play around with this function and see what happens as these integers get larger. Then see if you can explain that behavior based on knowing what types of variables are being used.